you're still watching Waze, August 9th is Book Lovers Day. Book Lovers Day, also commonly known as National Book Lovers Day, is celebrated on August 9th every year. This day is an unofficial holiday that is observed in other to encourage people to inculcate the habit of literature and reading. On this day specifically, people around the globe are advised to put their smartphones and every possible technological distraction away and pick up a book to read. In order to truly celebrate Book Lovers Day, one must only find a book and read it. You can pick a book of any genre you like and what genre one reads is not why this day is celebrated, but the fact that one reads is what makes the Book Lovers Day so important. Hmm. What do you think? So just pick up a book. It doesn't matter what any genre. Any book. Just read. Just read. Mm. So for me, I read any book. I read anything. As early as seven, mm -hmm. I was reading Tell. Tell magazine. I remember so that. So it, 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 I got uh, introduced to politics early in life, and I really like that. Nah, we can see what shaped Lamy the Lord. <laughs> we can see. Oh, yes, <laughs> I, I really but do. But you know that Tell was actually interesting to read. I used yeah. to love reading Tell. Oh, my, my sister goodness. was exactly I like you. She tell, used to love I reading remember, it. You know, it just yeah. used to have so many conspiracy theories. I remember, I, I remember and, reading it. And that was in the era of the <laughs> military. <laughs> exactly. So there was something exactly. to read. Exactly. There was yeah. something to read. There was something to read. What's your favorite genre? Fiction. Same for me. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, so I, I like autobiographies. Funny. Oh enough. my goodness! Yes, I do. I really enjoy them. Yeah. I loved like Obama's autobiographies, yeah. Condoleezza Rice at one point. Yeah. But you, you liked Michelle Obama's one. Ah, uh, did you like it? Why, why you asking me? I haven't read it. I've only uh, watched. <laughs> I only watched that documentary. She told Actually, me it was a good book. I, I read it because no, of her. No, no I read it immediately. It came out. I just couldn't. I, I was shaking was when it I got it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I read it I'm out you. No, no. So I watched the documentary, but I haven't read it. I have the book in my house, and I keep looking. at like, one day I'll pick this serious? book up and read it. I read it so in I'm, two I'm probably days. waiting for the audio. No, She's I will, a mom. I will she it. has no time. That's where I struggle, really, is finding the time. So you know what? Read. If I got the audio, because I find that reading for me through mm. audio has, like, it's that, that's obviously helped my reading habits, mm. and it's easier. So just listening and, and listening. I've only started doing that this year, but I, I still know you zone struggle. Out. I tune I out. Know. I know. So I can't, I can't, I'm not, I'm never going to try that. Why? Try I'm well, thinking of the thing about learning. You guys have to be. It's cool. my me time. Okay. So I pick up a book <laughs> yeah. at night. I look forward and to that. With it and and that's, I that's, read. Yeah. Okay. So here's what's caught our attention in the news. Lamy, what do you have for us? Okay. Um, yesterday, the sad news of um, the passing of um, Senator Buruji Kashamu, okay. who was an ex senator in the Eighth um, Assembly uh -huh. and was the immediate past um, one of um, governorship um, aspirants in Ogun State. Anyway, the bone of contention is that um, the ex-president of Basujo, mm -hmm. President of Basujo, his wonderful love sent a condolence letter to the um, governor of um, Ogo State. Saying, um, um, um. <laughs> the story is yes. <laughs> somehow. <laughs> mm. Well, he sent a condolence read, um, letter to the governor of Ogun State and mm. made some remarks there. Some people found them um, not palatable. Well, knowing Obasanjo, I didn't put it past him. All this controversial. Yeah, he's known for making such remarks and, you know. So what Fayashi was saying is he couldn't have had the guts to say it when Bridget Kashamu was alive. You know, I said that to I you as well. And I said, I don't it. think so. Obasanjo would have said it to anyone. But, what so but, but, why but, but my issue is, why is it that people can't express how they feel about people who, who pass away? No, so why, 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 why so the culture? The is, what's the point? So really he's dead truly, now. He's passed. You bringing that up serves no purpose. Do you exactly. think it so? just, It's just, for of me, it not. was No, what he's saying him. is mm -hmm. we should take a lesson out of his life. Why didn't he that if he maneuvered the passed. law, if he maneuvered so, justice? Lami, all I'm going to say to that yes. is people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Well, I wouldn't. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but for me, I'm not going to impede him from it's his thoughts. So yeah, he's, but he's I, free. I, I, I personally feel. I just thought it wasn't necessary. But, yeah. I think that you know. But you know what we were talking about this earlier, and I said you know if he had mentioned that before the man's passed, have just kept okay. quiet. It's fine. Uh -huh. Yeah, but when he's passed on, why are you not? No, but about I told you that they've been at each other's throats during his life. Okay, so then I'm like, okay, it's fair. Maybe you know he fought this fight till, yeah. till his death. <laughs> okay, okay, so um, I guess I'll take my story next. Yeah. So it was interesting when I saw this that CBN is um, asking that banks share their data with fintechs. 
and their reasoning behind this is that it will allow these fintechs to thrive to um, so. offer more services to serve more customers now this is interesting they say it will help them to bank more customers. You are rebanking, rebanking the bank customers. Rebanking the bank is exactly what I'm because saying. Because if you tell me that you are, I mean, that, that for me, even what stood out to me in that story was, what are the challenges with data? We've NDPR regulations that are still being put into exactly. place. Yeah, that was my what, what, what are the implications there? Yeah, but previously. I mean, CBN, yes, I understand trying to leverage data, blockchain, AI, and all of that, but... Um, you having them, unless they, they have a bigger plan that they haven't shared, um, this is a very succinct story, but to me when I read it, I just thought... I, I didn't see the value, I couldn't understand I didn't it. understand it. question is, are we rebanking the banks? And that's not really our problem, right? We well, still my, have my, a okay. number, a lot of unbanked people. The informal sector in Nigeria is huge. There's so, much, there's so much to be done there, and we're not focusing on those things. And then you're trying to... Bank the so maybe this is already. their way of Let supporting fintechs, but the, the devil's supporting they need to help them to acquire their own customers. Let me right. play the devil's advocate. For some people, even when they are banked, they are not actually using the banking That's services. what I'm saying. So you so see... So probably what they're looking at is some people cannot access the services that traditional, the traditional... Banks offer. Yeah, and they will actually... Yeah. So, so the, the question you should small, ask is, what is the fintech going to offer me that would now make oh, me... Oh, there's no small and more tailored services? Not necessarily. I don't agree. Yeah, no. so... The things that... Do you know, understand? For me, my problem is... Why are you compelling them to share data? Data is money. Why can't they gather their own I data? I mean, that's... that's, 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 that's and you know, the issue that yeah, you yeah. also raised is... Um, data protection. Data privacy. protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. data protection. That Absolutely. was... Aside from that angle, why do you have to share I agree. my data? I, I, there's a cost to acquiring that data. Now I just hand it yeah, over to that's you. that's why I said it's money. Yeah. Data is money. True. Yeah. True. So I really do... Why are you compelling so them? So there's something someone yeah. missing. We're still not getting the full right. picture. Right. So what do you have for us, Nasa? Okay, my story is from the Vanguard newspaper, and it's around churches reopening in Lagos today. So the, the headline was a bit unclear. It says, mass 60-year-old worshippers controversy as Lagos churches reopened today. So it was, okay, so were there mass 60-year-old worshippers in church, or was it don't let mask 60-year-olds? Anyways, but the point is that, you know, a couple of um, pastors, um, pastor whom you know very well, <laughs> My um, pastor. Okay, yes, I didn't know where. Let's say that has come. And another pastor, um, Tunde Bakari, he's okay. come out to um, basically say that what the government and other um, religious leaders are doing isn't right because it's still a bit premature to ask people to go to church. And I totally agree. I don't. I don't even understand what's going on in Nigeria right now. I'm wondering if COVID is still in my mind or if it's real because. You know, if the government is giving directives for churches to reopen, it's almost like life is going back to normal. Church is as normal as it can get. And you hear people saying stuff like, oh, I've missed church. We've been out of church for 140 days. You know, and I'm thinking, so is this about God or just gathering it's somewhere? It's the act of gathering. It really but isn't. So, but you know what? It's putting us more. And Nigerians, you know, so they're saying their guidelines and everything. And someone, you know, um, Bishop Igele says guidelines on agent merely advisory. In truth, it is merely advisory. Are people you're not actually going it. to? You're not enforcing it, and people but, but Nigerians think, are not that because disciplined because of time. What mm -hmm. I think is probably we're just following what they're doing in other countries because mm -hmm. churches have opened in the UK. They've opened. No, in I US. think we're actually reacting to pressure from, from some quarters from people, I don't know. from because I think the government is also trying to balance safety and security of life mm -hmm. as well as continuing to move the economy and people's lives forward. So, and the church, well, my take actually, church, what does the church do well, for the economy? So I mean, in our environment here, the, the church is, is a business. Key is to a bus that. <laughs> don't, well, it might be. Don't make Uti, me Uti, say that is disturbing. That, that I'm not trying so to say, NASA. But the truth of it is, the government has to balance. They have to try and, and keep everybody but Uti, terrible. Can I speak? Yes, mm -hmm. please. The truth says life has to continue. I, no, agree. I, I don't I disagree with How that. How long are we going to suspend our lives? But the no, thing well, is, so, so here's the thing. Church, church, though, we took the church story the though, other day about a church saying we're not going to reopen. Every church has to put the safety and security of its person. Then they're not compelling them to open. They're just saying you can exactly. open. So, so that's it's advisory I'm anyway. That the churches now should take that responsibility. Yeah. So you need to be communicating to your 60-year-old members, hey, you can't come to church. And or make sure that when they do mask. come to church, that they are not allowed. Because look, the, the reality of this is, do you want to put people at risk? Even, I mean, let's not let's not take it too biblical, but even the law of God says you have to obey the law of the land. Yes, yeah, so but, what, what, but what, what, what's your point? No, no, so I hear you. So I thought about that, like, okay, no, you have to obey, the, you know, give on Caesar what, mm -hmm. what, what belongs to Caesar, right? But 
my question is, what's driving what Caesar is asking us to do? Right? Okay, now, Sami, I don't understand <laughs> your point. What's my your point, point is the responsibility for the churches. So, the government has said, just like with everything else, the economy is opening up. I agree with you. We can't stay locked up forever. But the fact that I say to you, you can open is not a license for you to just throw your doors open oh, and say yes, so exactly no, right. so when i see this story that 60 year old mouse parishioners the government was pretty clear in that the elderly were to stay away so you as a church so do you not come enforce. exactly of you don't course, get yeah. to then come okay. and say we're taking a decision that they can why wear are we talking like this why are we talking like this why nigeria <laughs> well they've given them the it's guidelines not, then it's not they are free or well, you guys you remember when the lockdown was lifted did you see what happened on day one yeah yeah. So what were you talking about? To ease out. It's what was out. Corona. Life, life okay. has continued. Okay, ladies. <laughs> so let's move on. So stay with us as Shepard Martins joins us after the break.